Okay, we're going to talk about the aggregate supply, aggregate demand model in a way we haven't talked about it before. We're going to draw a straight line that's supposed to be straight. We're going to call that aggregate supply line in the long run. That's what some professors are going to draw for you, straight. The idea is that in the long run, our output is always going to end up at full employment no matter what. How can that be the case? Well, essentially, prices adjust, wages adjust, and everything ends up being at full employment. Let's look at how that might work. So what you do is you end up drawing an aggregate demand line that slopes down like this, just like before, and it's going to be affected by C, I, G, and net exports there, just like before. So it's going to shift if one of these changes. And then we're going to draw an um, aggregate supply line in the short run that looks like this pink one here like that. So now we've got aggregate supply short run. That might look familiar to some of you of professors that draw it this way. And now what happens is we change something and this will be a good way of explaining how this blue line shows up. In other words, no matter what the price level, we always end up at full employment. Let's have a short run change in aggregate demand. Uh, there's a fear in the economy of a war or something like this or consumers feel like house prices have gone down, they're going to stay down and the economy's sluggish and nothing's going to change. They don't buy things. Business people are also worried about the economy because of, oh, I don't know, the way consumers are responding and pre present government conditions. So these things go down. Consumption goes down. Investment goes down. And we get a short-run shift in the aggregate supply line to the right. So we'll put aggregate demand too. Now we're using our macroeconomic model at this point to understand the world. We end up with a low real GDP. This is the gap. This is the recession that this model is trying to show us. Like I've said before, you could show it in the business cycle. That's a recession down there. You could show it in the production possibilities model. That's a recession down there. You could do the Keynesian equation and put a monetary gap. You could use the aggregate expenditures Keynesian cross and show it. It's all the same stuff. This is a recessionary gap. In the long run, what happens? Proponents of the aggregate supply long run says something's going to happen to wages. Output is low, way down here. Output is way down here. So what does that mean? Our demand for workers is low. We're not making as much stuff as we did. Demand for resources like oil and steel, etc., is low. So all of these lower demands, if you think of those specific markets, mean that the prices of those things goes down. So you could draw over here, actually, the demand for uh, labor. And you would have demand supply, demand shifts to the left, and the price of labor or wages goes down. You could come over here and put demand supply for energy. And when the demand for energy shifts to the left, the price of energy goes down. So these things are all going down because output is down. And what does that mean? Well, if we remember about the aggregate supply line, let's, let's change our our little pen here to pink to show this aggregate supply line with wages going down that means resource prices are going down that's going to change the aggregate supply line it's going to shift to the right and we're going to shift it all the way over to here so we used to have an equilibrium point here the aggregate supply line shifts to the right and we end up just about there back to full employment. That's the concept of this line. In the short run, you might experience a recession, but in the long run, these are all flexible. All these prices are flexible, and that's going to change our output, and we're going to put it here. So what's, what is all this mess you're looking at here? Well, it's kind of like, you know, the way some of these people are going to work with this model. They're going to say in the long run, we'll always be at full employment. So these shifts of aggregate supply and aggregate demand are always going to be short run. So we're going to use these slanty lines where prices matter in terms of output. If there's a decrease in consumption or business investment, then this curve shifts to the left. But in the short run, with a lower demand for all of these resources, resource prices go down, and this is going to shift to the right automatically. Keynesians have one critique about this, and it's under this. How long? How long does it take for this thing to shift to the right? becomes a bit problematic for some people. If you're hanging out here at 8 for years at a time, people might get very nervous about being low, unemployment, 
and they might start taking their pitchforks and storming the castle and causing revolution and all sorts of problems in the economy that you can never re recover from. People down here are suffering real life problems. They're waiting for these wages to change. They're waiting for full employment to occur. But guess what? In the meantime, they're hungry. Children are getting sick. The economy is faltering so badly for so long that you have real problems for real people. And do we want to live down here? Keynesian economists say you can't wait this long. How long becomes a real issue? And you need to increase government spending in order to shift the aggregate demand. Well, that's my phone, and I've got to go. Um, maybe I'll do more. I'm not sure. Right now, uh, good luck with the aggregate supply, aggregate demand. Maybe I'll improve these later. But, you know, it's so complicated because professors do it so many different ways. Hang in there. Hope this helped. Bye.